Welcome back to Harbour Unboxed. Recently, I've noticed a lot of chatter about B450 and B550 motherboards following AMD's announcement for their upcoming Ryzen 5000 series. It seems like a lot of you still aren't clear on the differences between these chipsets, and as a result, I've seen many B450 owners who are concerned about what they should do, whether they should upgrade or not for these new Ryzen 5000 series processors. So in this video, I'm gonna talk about how these chipsets differ and talk about why you may or may not want to upgrade to support an upcoming Zen 3 processor. Also, I understand that AMD did complicate this discussion somewhat earlier in the year when they announced alongside the release of their Ryzen 3 3100 and 3300X processors that they would be axing support for Zen 3 with all 300 and 400 series motherboards. Thankfully though, due to pushback from the community and we even dedicated a video where we strongly suggest that AMD reconsider, they quickly walked back that decision and announced that the 400 series boards, so motherboards using either a B450 or X470 chipset, would receive support for Zen 3 processors, and now more commonly known as Ryzen 5000. So that means processor support is now actually superior for B450 motherboards, which officially support Ryzen 1000, 2000, 3000, and now the upcoming 5000 series. Though you will likely have to pick which of these series you wish to support, as a single BIOS revision is unlikely to support them all. Compare that to the B550 chipset, which only officially supports the Ryzen 3000 series and the upcoming 5000 series. Though please note, the 3000 series APUs such as the 3200G and 3400G aren't supported by B550 motherboards. Rather, APU support is limited to Renoir, so the Ryzen 4000 series of APUs, which I should add aren't supported on B450 motherboards, as far as I'm aware. Now, the key advantages to the B550 chipset is PCI Express 4.0, but this is a little bit confusing as this feature isn't actually enabled by the chipset. Technically speaking, there is no reason why B450 boards can't also offer the same level of PCI Express 4.0 support as B550 boards, as the support comes directly from the Ryzen 3000 series processor. They're just using the 20 PCI Express 4.0 lanes from the CPU. In fact, we have seen BIOS revisions in the past from the likes of Gigabyte, which did enable PCIe 4.0 operation on their B450 motherboards, but that was later removed, I imagine due to pressure from AMD. I'm not gonna get into that one here, but the point is PCIe 4.0 support on B550 boards comes from the CPU, not from the chipset. This means all B550 motherboards only support PCIe 4.0 for the primary PCIe x16 slot designed for the graphics card, as well as PCIe 4.0 for the primary M.2 slot designed for high speed storage. As it stands, neither feature is terribly advantageous to the end user as PCIe 4.0 is yet to offer any kind of performance advantage for graphics cards. Even the RTX 3090, for example, only gains about 3% more performance and that's at low resolutions with high frame rates. So we're talking just a few extra frames when frame rates are over 200 FPS. So in other words, nothing anyone is ever gonna notice. Then when it comes to storage, it's true that PCIe 4.0 drives do look mighty good on paper, but in reality, the difference between a good NVMe SSD running in PCIe 4.0 and 3.0 mode is virtually nil, particularly when talking about general PC usage and gaming. That's not to say PCIe 4.0 won't be important to have in the future, but it really is a technology that's suited to high-end systems using an X570 motherboard, or really even an HEDT system using a super expensive Threadripper CPU, for example. Now, the next most important upgrade for the B550 chipset, again, has to do with PCI Express lanes, but this time the lanes made available by the chipset itself. As noted earlier, the PCIe 4.0 support is actually provided by the CPU, but the chipset still has its own PCIe lanes, eight in the case of the B450 chipset and 10 in the case of B550. Both use a PCIe 3.0 times four link to the CPU, but the actual lanes offered by the chipset are quite different. Whereas the B450 chipset offers eight PCIe 2.0 lanes, the B550 chipset offers 10 PCIe 3.0 lanes. This increased bandwidth means that faster devices can connect to the chipset, though it's Kind of hard to say how useful that is for most of you. Uh, for example, the most premium B550 motherboards, they offer features such as Wi-Fi 6 and 2.5 gigabit LAN, but unless you've invested 
pretty big dollars in the latest wireless routers and network switches, and neither of those features are going to be particularly useful as you'll be limited by your networking hardware. In addition to the improved networking, uh, the increased bandwidth also means you get stuff like USB 3.2 Gen 2, but that feature is also available on select B450 motherboards. Then finally, the B550 chipset does also introduce official support for dual GPUs, but honestly, that's probably the most pointless feature it offers over B450, as no one really uses SLI or Crossfire anymore, and no less on a budget motherboard. That said, some B450 boards can support dual GPUs, but be aware the second GPU, or the second graphics card rather, will be severely handicapped with PCIe 2.0 times 4 bandwidth, so it's even more pointless. So the main takeaway being that B550 motherboards offer better PCI Express support from both the CPU and the chipset. But it's questionable as to how relevant that's going to be for you, and I guess that's something you can answer for yourself. But as an example, if you only have a gigabit switch and you don't want to spend big bucks on a 2.5 gigabit switch or better, then paying extra for a motherboard with 2.5 gigabit LAN might be a bit of, bit of a waste of money, let's say. I know there's the whole future-proofing angle there, but again, that's probably something for you to decide, and the same is also true for stuff like Wi-Fi 6. And as for the PCI Express 4.0 thing, not really a big deal right now. There's no hardware configuration for, let's say, mainstream desktop PCs that can really take advantage of it, and then by the time it does start to show a worthwhile advantage, uh, we'll be seeing that with extreme high-end hardware that comes in at a serious price premium. So certainly nothing that you'll be sticking on a B550 motherboard, for example. So what all this means is, just because B550 motherboards are newer and offer some fancy sounding features like PCI Express 4.0, it doesn't automatically mean B450 owners need to upgrade, or that someone looking at buying an affordable AM4 motherboard today necessarily needs to buy a B550 board. For example, you can purchase the MSI B450 Tomahawk Max right now for $110 US, whereas an equivalent B550 board like, let's say, the MSI B550A Pro, that costs $140 US. And while $30 US isn't a huge premium, and I would typically recommend the B550 model, for those looking to save as much money as possible, the B450 option is likely going to be better value. In this example, the B550 motherboard offers a slightly better VRM, 2.5 gigabit LAN, and PCIe 4.0, but again, depending on what you're doing with the system, there's a good chance none of those features will actually be all that useful. So in short, for those looking at upgrading their current Ryzen 1000, 2000, or 3000 series processor with an upcoming 5000 series model who already own a decent B450 motherboard, I see basically no reason why you need or want to upgrade to a B550 board. Again, if you have something like the MSI B450 Tomahawk or the Max variant, there's little to be gained by upgrading to a B550 board, and really you'd need to be spending upwards of $160 US anyway for a worthwhile upgrade, and at that point you're halfway to buying something like a Ryzen 5 5600X. So my advice is this, if you already have a B450 motherboard and you plan on upgrading to a Ryzen 5000 series processor, keep the board and wait until January 2021 for the Zen 3 BIOS and upgrade your CPU then. If for some reason at that point in time you require, let's say PCI Express 4.0 or maybe even better networking, well, you can just upgrade to a B550 or even an X570 motherboard then, but the chances are that won't be the case. Speaking of Zen 3 support, I've confirmed directly with AMD that there will be no performance differences to be seen between B450 and B550 motherboards when running a Ryzen 5000 series processor. They already have this working in their labs, so B450 support is already a thing. The delay after release will simply be to allow board partners time to get their B550 and X570 boards up to speed and iron out any bugs that may surface once the masses start upgrading to the new processors. So, you know, the usual teething issues we see with these new CPU releases. As for VRM performance, our existing testing should tell you everything you need to know, and AMD has confirmed with me directly that VRM load is practically identical between similar spec Ryzen 3000 and Ryzen 5000 processors. So in other words, expect the Ryzen 9 3900X and 5900X to place an almost identical load on the motherboard's VRM. Also, as explained previously in many of our VRM-related content pieces, VRM thermal performance, while useful information that can help you purchase a higher quality motherboard at a given price point, 
It's not the be all and end all of motherboard performance. How you configure the computer and what you plan on doing with it will determine just how much attention you should pay to VRM performance. For example, if you plan on running a 12 or 16 core Ryzen processor with the intention of executing core heavy workloads for extended periods of time, then VRM thermal performance will be something you'll want to take note of, especially if you live in a warmer climate. However, if you're only planning on running a 6 or even an 8 core Ryzen processor with no intention of upgrading anytime soon, then VRM quality is less of an issue. Likewise, if you mostly just play games, then again, VRM quality will be less of an issue as you won't be taxing all cores at 100% for extended periods of time. So in short, the intention of our VRM thermal testing content is to help you narrow down your motherboard choice. For example, if you're tossing up between one of three motherboards, say $150 US, and they all have the same features, but one has been proven to have a much better quality VRM, then that's likely gonna be the board you should buy, regardless of the CPU you plan on using or the applications you'll be running. For example, for us, the MSI B450 Tomahawk stood out from the competition, offering similar features to similarly priced models from the likes of ASRock, Gigabyte and ASUS, but with far better VRM thermal performance. This made the B450 Tomahawk a popular choice for those snapping up the exceptionally good value Ryzen 5 2600 and then the 3600, and with so many of them now in use, it's great to know you can hold on to it when upgrading to a Ryzen 5000 series processor. That said, most other B450 motherboards will work just fine. And as I just noted, VRM load will be virtually identical with the Ryzen 5000 series. So if you're happily running a Ryzen 7 or a Ryzen 9 processor on your B450 motherboard right now, you'll be able to do the same with a Ryzen 5000 series processor early next year. So I hope this video has helped clear up any questions current B450 owners had about upgrading to a Ryzen 5000 series processor. And for those currently tossing up between a B450 and B550 motherboard, this information should also be useful. So if you like the video, you know what to do. If you would like to support the channel directly, get some cool perks in return and just join the awesome hardware unbox community, then you can do so in our Patreon link down below. You'll get access to our exclusive Discord server, monthly live streams with Tim and myself, Q and A's, behind the scenes videos, all that good stuff. As I said, if you're interested, the link for that is in the video description. If not, that is perfectly fine. And I would like to just thank you for watching this video. I'm your host, Steve, and I'll see you again next time.